Welcome back to another video in 2D platformer series. I'm Ramiz al the developer of Avocado and co-founder of Binary Lunar. In this video, we'll show you how to create the run animation and we will start to do the movement controls. Create a new animation, name it Viking Run. The best way to start our run animation is to go back to the walk animation and copy the start position of the walk animation to our run animation hit record and then set the start position for the running where the left leg is moving a bit forward and right leg is moving back a bit the run animation will consist of five key positions the first one is when we are starting to run by moving the left leg slightly forward a bit and the right leg slightly backward. The second frame we set at frame number 15 where the left leg is stretched to max forward and the right leg to max backward. Also at that frame we move the left hand backward and the right hand forward. At frame 13 we set a new key and return back the legs and hands nearly to the start position but this time the right leg is in front of the left leg. Then at frame 45 we do the opposite of frame 15 so we set the right leg to maximum forward and left leg to maximum backward. We do the same for the axes, we move the left axe forward and the right axe backward. Finally at frame 60 we copy all the frames from the start position to that frame to get smooth and looping animation. Click play to test what we got but it's that the animation is slow now. So let's increase the speed of the animation by decreasing the time between the keyframes. So let's make this animation maximum 40 frames. Now it looks better but we need to make it look more realistic by moving the body up and down during the run animation. Since we rigged all the bones with the body bone, that means moving only the body bone will move all the character. So let's go to frame number 10, select the body bone and move the character up a bit. Then go to frame 30 and again either move the body up again or copy the frame 10 to 30. Then go back to the start frame, select the start frame for the body bone, copy the frame to frame number 20. Now the animation started to look better. Optimize the legs and axis positions before continuing to the next step. Just bend the legs and the axis to show abandoned joints not to look like one piece. To make the animation look more natural we need to eliminate the robotic move movement by not moving all the limbs instantly at the same time. So we need to make some scattering for the animations. For example to make the leg after a second, a millisecond of the other leg or a hand move after another hand. So just scatter those keyframes. You can randomly or follow a same pattern. Just keep the start position and end position not adjusted. I made a mistake here. So just return back the start position and the end position keyframes start on scatter those and just adjust the positions of the keyframes in the middle 
that would give more natural animation. Now let's make the animation more interesting by selecting the helmet and make it juggling during the animation. So let's go to frames 10 and frame 30 and make the helmet flying a bit when the character is not touching the ground. Then we put back the helmet with a little bit more force down on the head by moving it a little bit down. That will give a feeling of the helmet is moving during the round like juggling, I think. We can also add more details to the jumping helmet by rotating it to the left a bit on frames 10 and 30, then rotate it the opposite side a bit to the right on frame 20. The animation now is getting better and better. Push this animation to a higher level of details, we can also go to frame 20, select the body bone and stretch the character on the X axis. That would be in the frame 10 and frame 30 where the character is not touching the ground. And we do the opposite on the frames where the character touch touching the ground by squeezing the character on the X axis and stretching it on the Y axis. And that will give a bouncy feeling for the character since it's cartoony one. After doing any adjustment, just do don't forget to copy the frames from the beginning of the animation to frame 40, the end of the animation to get the smooth loop. And finally, let's make the beard animated by rotating them on different frames. Finalize the run animation. Now let's go to the animator window, select our character and make the running animation as the default and let's see how it looks at the runtime. I think it feels satisfying. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now let's go to the fun parts and prepare our character for the movement controls. First, we need to set the ground, so create a square sprite and resize it to be the ground of this prototype level. Happy with the ground. Add box collider to it, to the box collider. Then select our character, add a capsule collider 2D. Why we chose the capsule collider, not the box collider? Because at some edges, if you choose the box collider, it will make the character stuck while moving. So it's better to set a capsule collider 2D instead of the box collider 2D. Readjust the collider to match the character a bit. Then add a rigid body 2D. Then test the scene, the character should fall and stand on the ground. Let's reset back the idle animation to the default animation. And now let's add the code for the movement control, add the new component, script. Name it player control. Open the player movement script, then add the following parameters. We need a public float for the run speed and we need a reference to the animator and a reference for the rigid body and in start link those animator and rigid body to the components on our game object and in update function we need two floats x and y x to represent the horizontal axis by getting the input from the horizontal axis and y to get the input from the vertical axis then we need a vector 2 named direction to contain those x and y values then we need to create a, a function called run and pass the parameter direction to it and in that function we access the rigid body velocity and create a new vector 2 we pass to it 
the x value of our direction which is moving horizontally and we multiply that with the run speed then we get the velocity on the y axis as it is let's save the file and click play to test what happened now and as you can see we can't move now <laughs> let's see why Oh, it's because the move speed has been set to 0, so let's increase that to 10. That's nice, we did the crawl movements also while we're doing this. That issue happened because I was using the capsule collider and we forgot to freeze the rotation on the Z axis. So go to the rigid body and freeze the rotation on the axis and that will solve the issue. And as you can see, the movement now still doesn't feel so smooth and there is some blurriness and jitterness in the movement so we need to activate the interpolate by going to int interpolate and change that from none to interpolate now we got the smooth movement now let's go to the animator window to do the transition between idle animation and the run animation so make one transition from the idle to run then another transition from the run to idle and create new float horizontal axis so we go from the idle animation to the run animation when the horizontal axis is above zero and we go back from run to idle when the horizontal axis is below 0 0.001 this is one possibility when the player moving right and we need to uncheck has exit time and set the transition duration to something small like 0.05 now let's go back to our code and link the horizontal axis to our direction on the x by setting the float of our animator when you start moving you will notice that the player is transitioning from idle to running when we move to the right but not doing so when we're moving the left that's because we didn't handle that possibility using the animator so let's create another transition between the idle animation and the run and make that when the x-axis is smaller than zero or lower than zero then we add another condition to the transition between the run and idle that's when the horizontal axis is larger than minus 0.001 so now we can transition from the idle to run if we moved left or right. And don't forget to uncheck the has exit time for all the animations. The final thing we need to do is to rotate the character toward the direction it moves. So it, it, it moves to the right, we need to rotate the character to the right. And when it's moved to the left, we need to rotate the character to the left. So let's go back to the code and create new integer to decide which side we are facing. Also, a, a bool facing right to check if we are facing right or not. Then we check if the x value is above zero, that means we are moving to the right and we set the side to one. Then we create vector three to access the scale, the local scale of our character. And we say if we're not facing right, we set the scale on the x to minus one that means we flipping the character and we set facing right to true let's copy the chunk of code to create the other possibility it's when the x is lower than zero that means we are moving to the left that means the side is minus one so we check if the player facing right we flip the character and change the facing right to false now the character flipping nicely but I have one issue it's related to my character because my character is not isometric so the pivot point is not in the middle of the character if you face such a case 
Also, it's better to place the character inside the container to separate the graphics from the codes. So let's create a new game object. Then place the binary lunar viking inside that player as a child and move the rigid body 2D, the capsule collider 2D and the player movement code to the player and keep only the animator and the IK manager on the character. And since the animator now on child, we change that to get component in children. Make sure that binary lunar viking is in the center of the player by setting all the axes position to zero. Add a new public transform character container as a reference for the binary lunar viking. Then replace all the codes related to game object dot transform with the character container drag the binary lunar viking game object to the character container and now everything is working fine and finally offset the binary lunar viking to 0.5 on x it's totally up to your character and to the dimension of your character and its pivot point you might not need to do this step so here we go we got nice running animation with the smooth transitioning between the walk and run. I hope you enjoyed this video and in the next video we'll show you how to create the jump animation and all the codes related to that so don't forget to subscribe to catch the next video till next time see you soon.